talk about here is the recent development or what recently happened maybe a few days ago concerning the breakfast club the very very popular show um that most of you probably watch on youtube i know i don't listen to it on radio because obviously i'm not in the states but a big development happened over the last couple of days angela Yi, one of the main three co-hosts of the show has decided to leave um and kind of you know seek out her own thing and do her own show under obviously the same iHeart Media kind of banner or iHeart Radio, sorry, uh, banner, but you know, no longer part of the Breakfast Club, which is really interesting because essentially this is the end of the original kind of lineup, the lineup of co hosts that were so influential and such an integral part of the hip hop culture, especially when they come to interviews. They had so many legendary moments. The first one that obviously springs to mind is Soldier Boy, um, recently with the whole Drake, Drake thing. Um, obviously, there's um, the Ray J interview, was he screaming? and calling on phone high of coke ranting about fabulous and stuff and saying he's got booty goons that are gonna molest him there's so many other legendary ones obviously there's a the birdman one when he kind of tries to step to the breakfast club fredro star step into breakfast club uh beanie siegel step into breakfast club um kodak black's first interview with his banner clava on um who else i'm thinking about chief keith when he's like 16 and says now nah, i'm free hana like many, many legendary interviews that took place in that flipping radio show, right? And to be fair, you would never really imagine that they would kind of break up, especially considering, given, no, especially when you think about other radio co hosts on other stations like Hot 97 and whatnot, and Power and whatever else it may be, or uh, the other ones on the West Coast. It feels like when you get into radio, you get into the music industry in general, people rarely, if ever, leave their jobs because those jobs are so cushy, right? Essentially, if you're an A&R person or you work in marketing at a record label, you essentially get paid to do pretty much not really much, right? For the most part, or you're not the best at your job and you get paid a pretty decent salary to basically sit around and pretend like you're working, act cool, kid faces, go to media events, drink loads of free champagne and whatnot and hang out. And radio shows are probably the same. Even though you have to work, you know, especially when you've got a morning show, you have to wake up at silly hours. You get used to that routine and schedule and it becomes easier the more you do it. And then, you know, especially getting interviews and stuff, the more popular you get, the more people want to start coming to you instead of you actually reaching out to them. Um, it allows you to do other things in your career, like launching podcasts and media platforms and doing speaking gigs, all because people like how you carry yourself on radio. You become extremely viral, especially in the case of Charlemagne. You build your own entire presence off the, off the back of that. You know, your social media starts popping. It becomes a really good platform, but essentially, you rarely, if ever, especially look at the, think of the co-host, right? Maybe let's say the most busiest person is maybe Charlemagne. Despite all these numerous products, these projects sorry, he's got going on, he has never once really indicated that he was serious about leaving the breakfast club. There was maybe the contract negotiations and is he going to sign this and that, but you never really got the impression that he was ever seriously ever going to leave and i would imagine the reason why is because the money is so good right if you're getting paid like a million or maybe half a million a year salaried on top of whatever else you're getting um or, or you know on top of what else you yeah basically what not even including what else you're ever getting on side of that, which is including podcasts, like I said, speaking gigs and whatnot, consulting fees, like that money is long. So I completely understand why they never give it up. So part of me thinks, even though Anjali, part of me thinks this has to, this, there's more to this than me see I. On paper, they're saying, yeah, Anjali got an opportunity she couldn't turn down, her own show. But per, me personally, I think if there's one person that could leave the show and the show still survive was Anjali. I think if DJ Envy left the show and it was just Solomon and Anjali, it wouldn't work, right? But I think if Anjali, Angela Yee leaves the Breakfast Club, I think she's easily replaceable because she's not the greatest i think radio personality she's not very compelling um even her own show lip service a lot of people would say her co-host basically carried that show she's not really that integral to it it, it could easily survive with the other girls that do it and the show's a bit tired as a as a kind of platform anyway people going on and just being really freaky and talking about stuff they look up to a you know in a bedroom and whatnot people don't really give a shit about that thing anymore because if you just want to talk about it, you talk about it in your own platform it's not really that engaging to have it as a radio show or as a podcast so that's not really something i'm really sold by and just in general i never really thought she was that talented when it comes to being on radio but one thing that you can't really one thing you can't really hold against a woman is that the fact that she's hustled really hard for someone that i think isn't that that talented to have been in a position that she's had had that job for that long and been such a mainstay in hip-hop it does say a lot about how hard she works and you know her tenacity her networking skills her persistence blah 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 but part of me thinks the reason why she left the show 
was because of this beef that she had with Charlemagne, which a lot of people are crediting with the beef that she had with Gucci Mane, that Gucci Mane basically accused Anjali of trying to basically slide in her DMs or proposition him for sex, I don't know, whatever. So Gucci Mane and Anjali had some sort of spat. And then soon after that spat, which I think Anjali got disrespected by because she felt like Gucci Mane kind of called her out on her name, um, Charmaine the God then goes and interviews him and he then doubles down and basically says crazy shit about fucking Anjali. I think in the same interview, he even said he threatened to slap DJ Envy like he was going for it. And then, of course, she basically felt like, you know, he didn't have her back. And I think that was her realisation that her colleagues weren't her friends. I think and then ever since then, they were never really cool. I think for the longest time, they never really spoke on camera. I think if you notice some of those shows after that Gucci Mane interview, there was no real interaction between the both of them. Like Charlemagne spoke, DJ Envy spoke, Anjali spoke, but they were never speaking between each other, Charlemagne and Anjali. Then, they, then I think they reconciled and kind of got back on speaking terms. But maybe by then the damage was already done. Maybe she then started to hate him as a guy, as a person, whatever it may be. And it just maybe never recovered. And if you're going to do a radio show like that, and you know Envy goes on holiday or he has a break or he's got other engagements he has to go to and it's just used to doing the show for like a week, it's going to get a bit long if you don't like your colleague. Right? You don't need to be friends with your colleagues. They don't need to be, you know, you don't, you don't have to invite them to your wedding, but you have to be at least cordial to the point where if you see their back as you're walking into the office, you're not like, oh, fucking hell. You can't always be like that with your colleagues. It's not going to last long. Trust me, I've done it myself. It doesn't last that long. So um, maybe that had to do with it, the, the whole entire thing, because like I said before, there are many other radio hosts out there, even someone like an Ebra, who I'm not a fan of, who, got, who wear many different hats outside of radio, who never, ever, ever, ever quit their main gig. They always stay at their main gig. So... If they can stay at their main gig and work on, you know, be an integral part of Apple Music and still host a show on radio and Hot 97, then Angela Yee could have easily juggled doing both shows in the same building. Do you know what I mean? So the fact that she decided to move goes to show that maybe there's something going on behind the scenes or maybe just the money was too good. Maybe they're paying her double what she's getting paid at Breakfast Club. So why would you pay... Why would you stay somewhere to get less than what you're getting paid to do to get the promotion? Do you know what I mean? Maybe this is a pure monetary thing, but... You know, it's a the era's over. Up again, it's probably not going to be missed because I feel like in the last few years, Breakfast Club has kind of fallen off in a major way. I don't really think they affect culture in a way they used to do in the past. I don't think people, artists in general, have many moments on there that people really care about. Um, I don't think major artists actually care to go on there anymore as much as they probably would do in the past. Um, I don't think interviews and radio and that sort of stuff is integral to people's press runs anymore. Uh, even Megan Stallion did some weird thing where she did like an uh, interview with like Deska and Ebro. People, artists now approach interviews for album rollouts very differently. It's not all just all going radio. Now people are doing podcast runs. Now people are going on YouTube channels. Like it's a very different world in terms of promoting yourself. So maybe, and you know, Angela, you saw the writing on the wall and saw the Breakfast Club's influence on culture waning and just thought it's a dip, but I don't think so. I think there's too much money involved in that sort of stuff with sponsorship. Just look at the picture I've got on the screen there with them all three standing in front of an iHeart, um, you know, I guess it's iHeart Award, Awards with like all the ball sponsoring it. Those radio shows, you know, I don't listen to them I don't, cause, probably because I don't have a car, but they make a lot of money, man. They generate a lot of money. They pay their staff a lot, especially their, on their talent. So if that's the case, and she's bouncing then i don't know there may be more to it but who knows regardless um godspeed to angela you hopefully that show pops off and does what it needs to do but again i'm just not really that sure that she's really strong enough as an individual to carry a show on her own because she's a little bit boring but again that's just